Price trends for sports and supercars turned down, but this does not apply to all cars. As always, there are outliers. In this video, I will show you which cars continue to increase in value while the rest of the market topped and declined, and why they are still risky purchases despite their price strength. Now, before we discuss the cars for which prices continue to increase, it's important to provide a little bit of context. Most of this context is discussed in my exotic car market update video, so I recommend that you check that one out by clicking over here. But let me give you a quick summary. If you're watching this video, you probably know that car value soared during the pandemic. The price trends, however, started to change in the beginning of this year. They flattened, topped and started to decline. And this topping is observable in the Hagerty market rating and in the asking prices for modern sports and supercars. What's also visible in both metrics is the divergence in the market. Not all cars are coming down in value, and this contrasts to the price increases that we saw before. These were visible in the complete market. So let's have a look at the cars with strong price trends, but I need to warn you, you need to like Ferraris and Porsches. First up is the Ferrari 599. Over here you can see the price trend between October 2020 and October 2022, and this reveals that the trend is still pointed upwards. Values dipped slightly during the summer, but just recovered to record heights. And with this development, the total price increase during the last two years arrives at an amazing 45%. This is excluding the automatics and the GTOs. If we break this price trend down by the mileage buckets, we can see that the increase is visible in the complete market, but also that it is especially the low mileage segment that saw prices increase. Over here you can see that all trends are still pointing up, but that the trend for cars with an extremely low mileage is the strongest. Now the prices that I just showed you are asking prices, and especially for some of the low mileage examples they are really quite high. Sellers can of course ask this, but does it also mean that the cars are priced so high that they're not selling? Unfortunately, I don't have any data available that shows the selling prices or the time that it actually took to sell the car, but I do have a good proxy available, the time that the car was listed for sale. Over here we can see the time and days that the 599s on average were advertised for sale, and we can see that this used to be around 100 days before and during the beginning of the pandemic, but that it quickly came down to 40 days when prices soared. Yet, since the beginning of this year, the cars have been longer and longer advertised for sale, Currently, we're back at pre-pandemic levels. So this could indicate that the current asking prices are a bit optimistic. I'm not saying that they are, but that this is something to keep in the back of your mind. The listing time analysis that I just showed you is based on data from Autotempest. Autotempest conveniently pulls listings from a bunch of different websites into one place, so that you can browse through all of them. Check out the links in the description to find the 599s for sale right now. Now the next car that continued to increase in value is the F430 Scuderia Coupe. Over here we can see the price trend between February 2020 and September 2022. And we can see that the values dipped between the summer of 2020 and the winter of 2021, but have been increasing ever since. Compared to the dip, the values are up by 71.1%. Yes, 71.1. That must be the largest increase that I've seen on the channel. Now looking at the trend, we can see that the increase rate started to decrease, but between June and September, value still increased by 3.2%. However, I'll be the first one to flag that these numbers need to be interpreted with care. In January 2020, there were 17 cars for sale, but that number reduced to 5 cars in the most recent observation. Hence, this price trend is very sensitive to the type of cars that are listed for sale. Two or three low mileage cars can have a large influence on the price. Yet, I investigated the underlying developments in the market and the prices on Bring a Trailer, and both support the price trend over here. And with that, it's time to have a look at the next car on the list, another special Ferrari, the F355 Spider. Over here, we can see the price trends between December 2021 and September 2022, and you can see that the median price trend is still pointing up. Compared to June, prices increased by 13.8%, and compared to the end of 2021, this is 19.5%. As you can see, the confidence intervals for the F355 Spider are large. They stretch from $100,000 to $130,000, and this means that there is a lot of variation in the pricing. Think for example about the difference in cars that are in excellent condition and the cars that are in poor condition. So despite the fact that supply is reasonable at 18 to 22 cars, there is still some uncertainty in the price trend. Alright, so we covered now 3 Ferraris for which prices continue to increase. Traditionally, it is then also so that Ferrari values are quite strong. If you followed my market updates, then you know that the price trends for traditional models such as the 458 and F8 started to show topping patterns during the last months. 
and this contrasts to the price trends for many other cars, some already started to top in the beginning of 2022. Yet, it are not just Ferraris that did well, there are also a few Porsche models for which price trends continue to increase. And I think many of you can guess to which models this applies. Exactly, the older GT3s. But before we have a look at those price trends, if you enjoyed this video, please support the channel by clicking on the like button down below. Thank you. Over here you can see the price trends for the 997.2 GT3 and 996 GT3, and they are both still trending up. 997s increased by 4.6% between July and October, and the 996s by 15.9%. Compared to November 2020, that amounts to a total increase of respectively 48 and 76%. Again, astonishing numbers. These cars are even more expensive than the much newer 991.1 GT3. So, especially when we look at the trend for the 996, we can see that the confidence intervals are relatively large. But the data does hold up when we look at a more granular level. Over here we can see the development split by mileage buckets, and this reveals a few things. We can see that it are the higher mileage cars that kept their value the best during the last few months. However, when we look at a longer time horizon, we can see that the low mileage examples increased the most, and perhaps a bit too much. They went for insane premiums during last winter. More recently though, values decreased slightly in this category. Now just as in the 599 market, it is fair to ask whether these cars are actually selling for these high prices, or whether they're just sitting at dealers waiting for that one customer to come around who wants to pay top dollar. Well, the situation looks slightly better than in the 599 market. Over here we can see that the average time that the GT3 is advertised for sale is a bit more stable. We can see that these numbers increased slightly during 2022, but it is important to remember that the markets are relatively small, so these trends will always be quite volatile. It does however show that the high prices in these markets could be correct. The cars appear to be selling at roughly the same speed. This listing time analysis is by the way again based on data from Auto Tempest. So check out the link in the video description to find the GT3s for sale right now. So we saw now that the price trends for the 599, the F430 Scuderia Coupe, the F355 Spider, and the 996 and 972 GT3s are strong. Of course, they're not the only cars in the world for which prices continue to increase, but they are the only ones out of all the cars for which I'm tracking the prices that experience significant price increases during the most recent months. And this means that they are in a minority. Most sports and supercar values decreased by 1 to 3%, and another slightly smaller group saw prices come down by 4 to 7%, the latter group we discussed in the exotic car market update. Now all of this raises an important question. Are the cars that I presented to you really so special that their price trends can move against the market? It is possible of course since they have a few commonalities. They are all Ferraris or Porsches that are older, have a relatively low supply level and serve a niche market segment. And to some extent this mirrors the findings of Haggerty. They reported that the blue chip, Ferrari and German price indices remain strong. They measure a different market segment than what we are discussing here, but there are some similarities. However, there are also a few points of caution when it comes to the group of cars that we discussed. We cannot blindly trust the price trends. We need to understand the underlying developments in the market. All the price trends have a relatively large sensitivity to the underlying market characteristics. A few low mileage cars or cars in excellent condition can push the median price up. Now for some price trends, the most recent increase is then also in a gray area when it comes to being statistically significant. And this means that the price change could be the result of chance. But these tests can of course only go so far and are not to be trusted blindly. So I inspected the underlying developments in the market and shared the most important issues with you earlier in the video. Furthermore, we need to be aware that the cars might not be selling for these prices. In the 599 market we saw that the advertised time increased during the last year and is now back at pre-pandemic levels. And this highlights that the scarcity that appeared during the pandemic is fading away. And if we translate this back to the price trend, it means that a further price increase is unlikely. After all, that would mean an increase in the time it takes to sell a car. But let's assume that you want to buy a car that will go up in value in the short term. Are any of these cars a good place for your money? I would say it depends on your risk tolerance level. Much like stock picking, it is extremely risky to buy a car and expect its value to increase while the market trend is clearly down. So what I wanted to do with this video is to pinpoint the cars for which the price momentum is still favorable, but at the same time highlight some risks that are visible in the data. At the end of the day, you need to decide for yourself whether you want to take this risk or not. I can only advise that you buy a car first because you love it 
and second because you think that values will develop favorably. And with that we arrived at the end of this video. Now if you enjoyed this data driven way of analyzing car markets but would like to see a video for a different car, comment the name of that car down below in the comment section and once there are enough requests for a certain car, I will make a video about it. Also don't forget to subscribe and to click on the notification bell so you get notified when your requested analysis goes live. As always thank you for watching and I hope to see you next week for a new video.